So time now to take you through uh, more of the newspaper's articles uh, this morning. Here with me to review them are the broadcaster and journalist Afua Hagen and the author Joanna Williams. So welcome back to both of you into the final straight as far as the paper reviews are concerned. Um, Afua, uh, we've, we've dealt with I think pretty much all the front pages now more or less but we're turning inside at the papers now and um, we're kicking off with uh, an article inside The Express which focuses on the, the death of this two-year-old boy this week, the coroner ruling that it was mould inside his flat that was the cause of his death. He had respiratory issues, didn't he? And, and, and a lot of a focus now on uh, the head of the Housing Association. Yeah, so this is the really sad story of two-year-old um, Alab Aishak, who died um, from basically mold poisoning. He had it in his lungs and uh, in, in his blood when he died. And his parents had complained to the Housing Association, Rochdale Borough Housing, uh, and saying that they had mold in the flat. They, in fact, said that it was uninhabitable, but they remained there. And now the chief executive... Gav Swarbrick has said that he will not quit. Um, he has apologised. He said that no apology was enough for what happened to this two-year-old boy. But he also said that he has the confidence of the board and that he wants to stay and try and uh, undo some of the damage that has already been done. I mean, that cannot be undone. You can't bring this little boy back. But he wants to stay and oversee the changes. Um, and he is saying uh, that he wants this to be a turning point and a watershed moment. And from here on in, that they will look after their tenants better. But of course, our parents are saying that that is not enough, that that's not going to bring this boy back. Uh, and that they say that we see nothing to indicate that the death of our son in any way will serve as a defining moment. They've also said accountability must be done and be seen to be done. They also said that the Housing Association had the opportunity to do something and they didn't take it. And there's no reason why Gareth Corbett should still be in his £185,000 a year job after the death of their son. Uh, and after you referred to it just there, his response, uh, we can actually show people, I think, his statement um, in, in response. Uh, he has said, there we go, um, as you say, I want to start by saying how sorry I am um, to Awab's family for their loss. No apology will ever be enough. Having spoken to the board, I can confirm that I will not be resigning. They've given me their full backing and trust to continue to oversee the improvements and changes needed within RBH. We agree with the coroner that the tragic death of Awab will be and should be a defining moment for the whole housing sector. So, uh, as you were, were outlining there, Afua, he, he is defending his position, isn't he? Uh, let's move on, though, Joanne to um, a story inside The Guardian, and this has made uh, some of the front pages as well, hasn't it, uh, this morning, um, about um, violence against women. There have been a couple of stories around. Tell us a little bit about this case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I think some tragic parallels with the story or Afua was just discussing there. Uh, it's another uh, story around a, a, a woman, Ranim Ude, aged just 22 years old, and her mother, 49 years old, um, both killed, um, murdered. Uh, by the estranged husband of Rani, um, but, but again, had given lots of warnings to the police. Rani had been in contact with the police an awful lot of times to report stalking, domestic violence, coercive control, and repeatedly the police, it seems, failed to act on these warnings that they were given. Um, there were either delays or, or just not reported accurately or not um, investigated in a timely enough fashion. And, and this is a, a real terrible abdication of responsibility, and we see the tragic consequences of this playing out. I have said personally, I do wonder if in both of these cases of a little boy whose parents were ignored uh, when they complained about the mould and when Ranim phoned up to the police and was ignored when she complained about domestic violence, it does cross my mind to wonder whether if these had been middle class white people, whether they would have been ignored to the same extent. Now, you know, I, I might be wrong in that. I hope I'm wrong in that. But I, I think that suspicion lurks at the back of your mind and, and you do wonder whether people are being treated differently um, on the basis of, of um, who knows what, you know, okay. some prejudice and discrimination. OK. Um, I, I want to do a very quick 10-second look at Paddington to give us a little bit of an upbeat end to this. After very briefly, this is in the mail, page two and three, very quickly. 
Yes, these are all the Paddington bears that have been collected uh, that were laid uh, after the Queen died. Uh, and the Queen Consort is going to distribute them to children's charities and uh, teddy bears picnic next week and a really lovely ending uh, for all those Paddingtons. Absolutely, and some great pictures there as well. Lovely to see you both as ever, Amber and Joanna. Thanks very much indeed.